What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy Tactics. Today we explore the underground of Golan Coal City as we look for monsters to slay. But uh, before you do that, you probably want to make sure to make a secondary save file because Golan Coal City is a multi-tier dungeon, uh, just like some previous maps. It's not quite as hard as those, but, you know, better be safe than sorry. So, let us go to the Colliery Underground third floor. Which is kind of odd, because the, the floors in this place go, like, in reverse. So... Now, for this battle, we have to divide into teams of... well teams. I'm trying to recall where the teams are actually placed. I can't for the life of me actually recall it. But, oh well. Now, this first battle is pretty easy, but it can be very annoying. You will see why in the near future. Yes, those are all chemists. Every single enemy in this battle is a chemist. I'm pretty sure they're all toting mithril guns. That's an easy way to find out. They all in fact have mithril guns. Now Beowulf is a bit of an interesting fellow. Oh, I should probably mention, um, he actually comes with uh, a rune sword, rune blade rather, which is uh, better than the ice brand, but I stole it and gave it to Tim. And it's particularly good for a geomancer. Uh, it's got one extra attack power, but it also has two extra magic attack, which is handy for a geomancer. Now Beowulf is interesting because he, uh, his class is Temple Knight, and Temple Knight is basically a mixture of a uh, holy knight. Um, you know, one of those classes that uses the Holy Sword attacks and an Oracle. Rather than his attacks doing damage, his Magic Sword uh, attacks inflict negative status elements like uh, Yin Yang Magic does. So Beowulf, uh, I, I like to give him Yin Yang Magic as a secondary ability, just because it kind of makes sense. So. The goal here for this battle is basically just to kill off all the chemists as quickly as possible before they get a chance to, like, revive each other and stuff. And I guess if you can, then, uh, being able to, like, disable them helps too. If you can't finish one of them off, though, then you're probably in a bit of trouble because they have hex potions and those heal 150 health. Uh, maybe I should cast flare on him instead. No. I'll just go with him. And now because this isn't a particularly hard fight, there's a couple of things that I want to go over that I have kind of neglected to in the past. The first is in regards to the heck is that? Uh, uh, reaction abilities, and namely, uh, pe some people might be wondering why I've chosen the reaction abilities that I have. Uh, that is to say, uh, basically, blade grasp for everyone. And the reason for that is, well. A lot of people tend to prefer monk reaction abilities, either counter, uh, which straight up lets you counterattack with your physical attack, or hamido, which lets you do your physical attack before getting attacked. And uh, a lot of people tend to like those abilities, but uh, they are good, but I tend to not like them quite as much. And the reason for that is just because. Um, the thing with counter is if you counterattack someone, 
you don't get any experience or job points for it. And it's also, so I mean, it's you never really know when you're going to counterattack and stuff. It's unpredictable. And I like to have more controls. So with Blade Grasp, you prevent taking damage, whereas if you counterattack, you still take the damage, but you also deal damage back. So I in the that, I guess that's the other thing is that with Blade Grasp, I think it uh, comes out to being better in the end, just uh, for straight up numbers. But also, uh, if you have full control over when you're attacking and you're not uh, doing damage through counterattacks that you aren't getting experience and job points for, I just think that's better. And the other thing I haven't explained yet is Zodiac compatibility. Uh, and for that I have to kind of stop doing stuff for a moment. Basically, I'll just give a, a basic overview, but basically every character you can see under their name and their class, they have like a little sign. And that's their Zodiac sign. And depending on their Zodiac sign, every person has a Zodiac compatibility. If you examine their sign, See, it says Sagittarius. Good compatibility with Aries and Leo. Bad with Virgo and Pisces. Best with Gemini of the opposite sex. Worst with Gemini of the same sex. And that just determines um, how much damage and healing, and um, as well as you know the su success chance of buffs and debuffs and stuff. Um, so, it, like, if you have good compatibility, then you will have like a high success rate whereas if you have a low compatibility you will have a low success rate and I tend to think that it actually works a lot like faith come to think of it because um, it affects both uh, outgoing and incoming sources so because of that uh, I tend to not really worry a whole lot about it but you can certainly you know game it a little bit by giving, uh, constructing yourself a party where everyone has high compatibility with everyone. So if you have like a support character that's going to be doing a lot of buffing, then give them, you can give them a zodiac sign that has uh, really good compatibility with your other characters, stuff like that. But personally, I don't think that that has a whole lot, it's not really worth it, I guess it doesn't have a high enough it's not worth the effort uh, uh, that it takes to coordinate if you ask me but I mean that's why a lot of times you'll see you know certain attacks will be a lot stronger against some enemies than others uh, if you have a good zodiac compatibility with them then you'll do more damage to them but you also will take more damage from them so it's it goes both ways that is why I tend to not care a whole lot about it. And I'm surprised it's taken that long to get a Phoenix Town out of this fight. Let's see. Could probably finish this guy off, no problem. Unfortunately, I, I was hoping to demonstrate uh, the Geomancer Elemental attack this battle, but I uh, neglected the, to realize that... Um, I don't actually have the appropriate elemental ability for this fight. Basically the way it works is uh, depending... the elemental attack is different depending on what tile you're standing on. So if we look at the uh, Geomancer here, there's a different abilities for different tiles. So for snowy tiles it would be Blizzard. Um, and because I don't know Blizzard, I can't use Elemental standing on these tiles. You can tell what a tile is just by hitting select while you're hovering over a specific tile. Unfortunately, everything here is Blizzard. Not much you can do about that, really. But, you know, basically it's just, it does um, a bunch of damage 
and each uh, elemental also has a somewhat small chance of inflicting a status element and the type of status element is determined by uh, what panel you're standing on and therefore what ability you're actually using. For example, the most common is uh, Hellgrass, no, Hell Ivy, which is um, what you use when you're standing on grass, and that has a chance to inflict stop on the enemy. So that can be handy just for the uh, chance at the status ailment alone. Hopefully I should be able to demonstrate that for the next battle, though. Uh, I should hopefully get enough JP to learn Blizzard by then. Just about done with this fight, despite a couple of Phoenix Downs getting in my way. Nice thing about that, though, is that even despite Phoenix Downs, you can still kill stuff pretty easily since they only revive with 11 health. In fact, 11 health chemists would be very uh, very good candidates for taking out with an elemental ability. The thing about elemental is uh, because it's based on magic attack, it's actually not the greatest uh, on Geomancers, but if you put it on like a wizard or something, it can be an, a really nice uh, free ability to use. And I can't hit him from here, so. Kind of blocked myself in a little bit. I'll well, just use some sort of black magic, I suppose. Take a look at the AT. Eh, whatever. And uh, also because of the magic attack, Geomancers don't actually get a whole lot of it. So it really doesn't take long for the damage that elemental attacks do to really fall way behind everything else. So Geomancers don't tend to be very good for anything except for their physical attack and their... Uh, they have a decent selection of equipment and stuff uh, past, you know, maybe chapter 2. And with that, we are done the first stage of this battle. So we will continue on with the second stage of the battle next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy Tactics. Catch you later.